So can ChatGPT and particularly GPT-4 refactor our legacy bad React code into way much more cleaner code that follows the solar principles? Is that even possible? So in this particular video, I'm gonna go ahead and test that out and actually put the new GPT-4 model, the OpenAI's newest models into the test and see if it's actually capable of converting our legacy React code into a cleaner code that follows the solid React principles. So if you haven't watched the video already, I already did the video about solar principles that explains everything about solar principles and how they work in react and how you can make your code way much more cleaner for that one so i really can recommend going and watching this one before coming and watching this video so you can have better context and understanding of what we're going to do now today i'm going to go ahead and do the same code the like the code the legacy code and try to feed it into the new gpc4 because now gpt4 is more capable it can take more input and so on and so forth and see if this can actually go ahead and produce to us and actually refactor the code for us to follow the solar principles and refactor it into a clean code. So if you're not familiar with already, GPT-4 has been released like a couple of days ago and it's been just going wild. Like the new model in here, the fourth version of the model is just wild. And it has been actually taking the lead and pretty much in any kind of like performance benchmark or anything or exams results. Like GPT-4 in here, as you see, like in the green is literally taking the lead compared to GPT-3.5, which already in the chat GPT and we've been all using all this time. So yes, this model, the fourth version, the GPT-4 is absolutely absurd and absolutely amazing. And yes, today I'm going to go ahead and put it into the test. So if you want to use GPT-4 and actually access to the model, get error access, you need the GPT plus subscription. So you need to subscribe for this one. And once you do, you're going to have like, you know, you will be able to select the models in here, whether you select default legacy model, GPT 3.5 or GPT 4. Now it's crazy in here. Reasoning and conciseness is literally so good for this GPT 4 model. The only downside for it is speed. So this one is still a little bit slow. Uh, the open AI steam behind this is still working on this, trying to improve everything. But still the reasoning for this is just going to be so amazing. And this is all we need for pretty much programming and, and coding. And stuff. All right, so let's get started with the first principle, which is the single responsibility principle. So in this code base in here or repository, I got pretty much all the principles from like SRP, single responsibility, open, closed, and all the principles in here. And for each one, for each folder, there's actually the bad code implementation, which is like not the clean code that doesn't, this particular code in here doesn't follow that single responsibility principle. And it got a good code in here, which follows the single responsibility principle. And, and this is actually the cleaner code we built in the previous video. So the idea behind this one is actually we're going to go ahead and copy all of this code, just all of it and actually feed it into the new chat GBC and say, Oh, hey, buddy, can you go ahead and refactor this for me and just take this and make it a single responsibility rule. And maybe if it just fails, you can just provide some context to it to basically understand how to apply SRP in react. So here's actually what I'm going to get started doing is actually doing Oh, hey, but I have legacy code, I need to refactor full solid principles, it could be cleaner code, and it could raise like I could get a raise from my boss, we want to make sure we use hooks for functions and separate components when needed. Okay, so this is just like a quick intro. Now for the actual SRP. So I'm going to go ahead and just do like, Oh, uh, first, uh, maybe you can remove this one and say, Oh, uh, you can go ahead. Let's start by refactoring this component following the single responsibility principle. Please make sure to separate the logic into standalone hooks that would make the code look easier to read and maintain. So I'm just going to copy paste the code in here, all of it, just the code from that component that I really want to convert to SRP and make it follow this solar principle. And that's it. So I'm just going to move this to cleaner, I think I need to do a comma in here. And there you go. So I'm going to just go ahead and send this one and see how it's going to do. Of course, the speed for this one, it's not really that great. So it's going to take some time to do all of that. And actually, first, I think, oh, it just provides some, that's pretty cool. It actually provides us how we can do that. It uses the use fetch products. So you already convert it into a hook product card and rating filter. That's pretty nice. Let's see how it does. So I think it stopped midway through in here generating the product card. So I'm going to go ahead and do please continue and see if he actually continues from that. So okay, apologies. Uh, there you go. That's the continued component. That's pretty cool. So you continue the product card in here. So if you look at this here, actually it does a really good job. So you create a hook for fetching products, the same as we did in here for our code base. So if you look at our code base in here, we created that hook that uses products and returns products, we created a hook also for filtering to handle the rating and filter, we created a filter components, and we created like a product card. So if you back into this, actually, this actually did for fetch products, it created a product card for us, 
which is pretty nice. I asked to continue in here and actually did a rating filter. So he created a component for us. The only thing he failed to do is actually create like a hook for filtering that, which I still can, can go ahead and access or basically ask it politely to go ahead and do this. So can you please separate the fetching and filtering logic into separate hooks? That would be great. Or maybe I can just go ahead and do, oh, separate the... Um, uh, filtering logic into a separate component because he already did the fetching for us. So let's go ahead and see how it does with that. And I already just, you know, it already tells us, oh, there's actually we're going to be building a use filter product by rating. And there you go. It did actually refactor this into a separate hook for filtering and, and like just doing the filtering here and actually using it. So that works absolutely fine. So I copied all the code in here into a single file, which you shouldn't put it into a single file. You should split it into multiple components. And that's actually the idea behind SRP. But I just put it into a single file to understand exactly how it works and the simple stuff. So I use fetch products. I put the products card in here. Uh, I put also the rating filter. I put like the use filter products by rating hook. And this is actually our final kind of like component, the main component here, the GPT-4, which uses both hooks and actually go ahead and render that. And if you look into this, into our good example that we wrote ourselves a while ago in the tutorial, that pretty much looks the same as it. It just uses two hooks in here. It provides some stuff in here and provides like standalone components. And that's it. And this, my guys, ChatGPT-4, writing for you clean code and actually converting your code or refactor your code into using like the single responsibility principle. And matter of fact, if you test this code and actually it works fine, this is actually what it is. And if you just try to do the filter in here, it works fine. If you try to filter by the actual rating in here by the stars, hallelujah, that's so amazing. Now, the second principle is the open close principle. And yeah, we have some codes to test in. So I was just going to try to feed into GP. So here's the input I'm going to do. My boss wants me to refactor this component to follow the OCP open close principle. And I'm just going to go ahead and like copy the code in here and provide it right away, which is like the bad code. So I'm going to get back into this, go ahead and provide this straight through and click enter and see what it does. And there you go. It did the refactor for us and actually provided a really cruel and concise explanation of what is open close principle and how you can apply it in our case. Now, the main idea in here, instead of using the rule, we actually tries to use an icon to make that extensible to follow the open close principle. And that is pretty good. So if I copy the code in here real quick, as Chris in here creates two buttons back and forth buttons and actually uses the icon in here to make that extensible to provide the icon straight through. But if you look into our bad code in here, the code, the legacy code before doing that, what we were using is actually using a role in here and say, oh, if it's forward, go ahead and render that for me. If it's like the back in here, just go ahead and render that for me. And that is not extensible at all. But GPT-4 actually knew that and actually went through just clearly went through in here and actually made that more extensible. And yes, if you test that out, it works absolutely perfectly the same way it does before with two buttons. But now the code is way much more cleaner written by GPT itself. And the third principle when I just go ahead and try is Liskov substitution. So if I go back to my chat GPT in here, just do, oh, also want to refactor this to follow the Liskov substitution principle and so on and so forth. And I go back to my code in here and use or copy the bad code, which is a search input. And essentially this would just need to make sure that the search input in here for the list cost substitution where like a base or like a child component can be easily substituted in, in a parent component, something like this, where it would look like something like this. So just basing that code, click and enter and wait a couple seconds just to see the result. And there you go. It did that for us. It actually provided a really cool explanation in here in details. And there's actually the component here. It made it more module. Now you can substitute whatever you want. Like it created for us a base input in here. And whenever we need to substitute that input, we can easily do it. And that actually can make it follow the list cost substitution because that like principle itself, the LSP principle is very hard to apply in a React word. It's more of like a class based, but still we can apply it this way and chat GPT actually got it right. So if you copy and code in here into the GPT-4 in here, that's basically what he provided for us. And if you actually go in and compare the same thing we used before, this is actually our good one we provided and worked with before. And this is actually what chat GPT actually implemented for us. If you look at this really closely in here, they pretty much they are are identical and they are pretty good. So for that one, if we just go ahead and try this one real quickly and see what it does and how it looks in the UI, still looks absolutely amazing and pretty much the same way we did it before. So for the fourth principle is interface segregation. So for the ISP principle in here, I want to do it like, oh, can you go ahead and refactor me pretty much the same thing we did before, but I only provided this small update in here. Oh, ISP should only apply to components where only needed and used props are passed to the components. The component should not take props that is not not going to need or use inside of its function or inside of its body. So that way we can just give it a hint because it's a little bit 
required for it to know exactly where ISP is. But here we provided exactly what like the, the definition of ISP in general and how it should work in React. So now if I copy the bad code in here and try to get back in here, put it, click enter and just wait for this to do the magic it does. And there you go for just like the initial explanation what it did it just says oh the thumbnail component only needs the image property of the project object therefore it would be better to pass just the image prop to the thumbnail component instead of entire product object and that's exactly what we did for our code and that's exactly what it should be done for that principle now screws in here for the thumbnail instead of taking the whole products it only takes the image url just passing it the image from the products and it doesn't need to take the whole product object because it doesn't use any of that props it only needs the image url so if you jump to our good code we built before in the previous video if you look into that that's exactly what we did before we were passing product but instead of we change it to image url and now we're using only image url to make it follow the isp principle and the gpt4 did the same thing for us it made that work perfectly and last but not least is the dependency and version principle so the basic of that principle is you want to extend the functionality of that and don't make it hidden inside of the component itself now instead of doing or handling the submit inside of the form component what we do we create another parent component here we provide the handle submit now the form component here doesn't care about the logic of submitting and doing the http request but instead it's actually provided by the parent component through props all right so let's go in and try this out with our you know basically the chat gpt in here so i'm going to do dependency inversion and you want you to refactor this last component for me i won't ask you more this is the last component i'm going to be asking you um so you're going to copy the bad code in here which is basically just the form and just uses the handle submit here. so this should be easier for it. So I'm just going to put the code, click enter and sit back and wait. So if you look just the initial thought of this one, it tells us, oh, the dependency inversion principle should not depend on low level modules, but both should depend on abstractions. In this case, the form component that could depends on Axios for making HTTP requests, which is a low level implementation and should be avoided. So that's literally what it's doing. It actually needs is in the right truck in here. So if you look at the code, what it did, it's actually created for us a class service, which is the auth service. And it went beyond what I did myself. It created like a class for it. It created an absolutely like an async class and service which is amazing with interfaces and everything now for the refactored code this is actually our form the bad here is actually our form so it did like the handle submit all it does in here it waits for the auth service that's going to provide it from the props so pretty much the same thing whether you're providing actually a method or a function or providing like a class instance in here which is so much more superb and what it tells us in here when we try to use this one we can go ahead and pass in the instance so if the instance isn't created inside of the component itself it's passed through from outside the props in here so it handles everything really really well so yes guys i'm completely mind blowing of like what gpt4 is capable of doing and i'm super afraid of like what comes next in the GPT or the AI word for something like this literally that is amazing if like this is this is a refactoring code that can take you like at least a couple of days if you're working on it but GPT-4 can provide you like everything like 90% correctly or even 99% correctly yeah that's that's pretty astonishing so anyway guys thank you guys for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this kind of experience let me know if you love like this type of experience i can do more and more for it but anyway guys thank you guys for watching catch you hopefully in the next ones